Okay, so uh, this is Siegfried Berezov, everybody, here on CFRU 93.3 FM, and um, uh, I'm in the studio here with Michael Parenti, um, a very noted uh, uh, progressive scholar, written about 20 different books, and uh, he is here with us today. I actually interviewed him on Back in the USSR here in, uh, uh, back in the first week of July, it would have been, and uh, so thank you very mu much, Michael, for coming, coming back to us, coming back with us here. All right, nice to be here. Siegfried. <laughs> Siegfried. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Indeed. So um, Michael is going to be s talking tonight at the uh, University of Guelph, and this is the first time you've, you've been here, I, yes. I would assume. So uh, that's going to be happening tonight at 7 o'clock, so this is kind of a like, preliminary uh, interview we are doing. So I hope to see many people out, um, out at that, actually, and uh, it, it took me a long time to put that together. Me and Drew Garvey have been uh, working nonstop, more or less, for, since July, more or less. To, uh, to make this happen. So uh, it's good to know that uh, our efforts have borne fruit and, uh, and you are here. So I want to I thank you again for, uh, for taking the time. Yeah, well, I'm glad to be here, mm -hmm. Siegfried. So. Yeah, so first of all, I just really would want your take on the Occupy movement. Of course, like the Occupy movement has you know, gotten one, a lot of fanfare uh, recently. Into, well, I wouldn't say quite fanfare. Certainly the media originally tried to black out of the original event right. in New York City for the first few weeks it, uh, it existed, <coughs> then it begrudgingly starts to cover <coughs> it. And then after that, it starts to, you know, try to marginalize the, uh, the protesters themselves and, like, say, you know, they don't know what they're doing. They, they have absolutely no clue whether what they're standing for and this sort of thing, trying to, like, you know, pigeonhole them. So I'm just, like, wondering what your take on this whole movement well, is. Well, you just said it. Yeah. I don't have to say any more. You don't actually <laughs> don't have to say any more on that. No, you really, you covered, yeah. you covered how the media treated it. I mean, they, they, um, they, for the most common source of media distortion and suppression I've written in earlier books and times, and I think it's still true, is omission. You just mm. simply do not say anything about the thing. And uh, uh, NPR in the U.S., NPR is National Public Radio. It's our yeah. radio. They went, they went 14, 15 days without ever mentioning it. This is the same, and as people as people brought up again and again with the Tea Party, the tea baggers, why uh, they were all over them, uh, uh, 200 Tea Party demonstrators in Washington, and there were about 300 media there, and all saying, oh, here's a, a major movement that may take over the Republican Party, it's this, it's that, and you couldn't hear enough about the Tea Party people. Uh, they were taking their cues from Fox News also. So... Um, so here along came the Occupy Wall Street, Wall Street actually being occupied by large numbers of people yeah. for the first time in its history, really. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, they, and they couldn't find time to even notice it. And then after uh, enough had gotten on the Internet and enough people ran, enough people kept talking about uh, the odd, uh, oddly strange different coverage uh, or attention level to this protest as opposed to the Tea Party, then they sort of, and, and a couple of, Police had to rough up uh, some of the demonstrators oh, yeah, yeah. and yeah. and uh, you know give the taser or or, or spray uh, a couple of uh, young women there and, and they finally discovered it and they came in and that brought them to stage two of distortion and that was trivialization. I'm going to talk about this tonight. I'll, I'll oh, get yeah. to mention. And the trivialization is they came in and what did, what did they see? They saw knapsacks and they saw kids with war paint playing dr on drums on and drums the clown remember the clown he oh yeah got, he got top coverage there was a guy in the middle you know <laughs> give a give a clown an audience and he'll clown and he was dancing around and they showed that so this was like a carnival festival and they talk a festival atmosphere it's not sure it's not clear what they even want or ha 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 it was very clear actually the placards and the posters that they they, they put up were, were actually politically very advanced. They talked about capitalism, and they talked about imperialism, mm -hmm. and they talked about socialism, and they saying all sorts of things about income inequality, and they had that wonderful formula of the, it's 1% versus us 99%, like 9%, yeah. which was a brilliant, I think, a, a brilliant uh, PR uh, um, um, you know, uh, handy little, it said it all in a way, well, yeah. and it should have been said a lot sooner in a way. So, um, and instead they smirkingly 
uh, talked about how they didn't know. Well, yeah, if you don't listen to what they're saying and if you don't look at what, what they've printed and, and put up, then you, you, you can come away as ill-informed as when you first arrived. And the media, the media does do that. What, what they do is they focus on uh, not the content of the event, They'll, they'll do this with strikes, too. They'll, they'll never tell you. They'll say the, the, the owners have made offers, but the workers are making demands, and they're still locked out, and there's the picket line. This and, that. and they don't talk about that the strike is about occupational safety, or the strike isn't about wanting more money, more money, but just protecting their benefits, or, yeah. or, 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 or about hazardous materials. And, I mean, they, they, they just talk about strikers were out here, and now... Uh, uh, the police are here now, and then this is, and and you get all the stuff about the surface happenings about it, and, and and nothing about the content of it, and and then in this case they turned around and said there is no content. These people don't know what they want. Yeah. So it's uh, and then of course there's the whole um, attack and destroy the target, which I believe you mentioned in uh, Contrary Notions. I think is where I read that. So if like you know a certain individual, uh, say displeases the establishment, uh, I think the example you gave was a. Uh, uh, the Gary guy, Webb. yeah, Gary the guy Webb. who broke yeah. the story about like the uh, the CIA and drug trafficking. Yes, right. That's right. Yeah, he his career was just simply shattered, and he was dragged through. He was a Pulitzer nominee, as a matter of fact, I th- or he had won a Pulitzer. Yeah, he was like a real high profile. Yeah, guy. Right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, and they just pounced on him, and bl- he eventually committed suicide. Gary, yeah, it's Webb. like it was that it was that bad. Yeah, yeah. For, I mean, for, he wrote the book, you know, that revealed it all and everything, and, and he would give talks here and there, but he realized that for the rest of his life he was going to be marginalized. And, yeah, like his blackout, and, yeah. or attempted blackout, like on, on everything he was going to say. Right. Right? Yes. Well, in the mainstream, yeah. Mm-hmm. So he was consigned to, you know, small campus radio stations, no, community I mean, radio. <laughs> I know the feeling. So yeah. uh, so that's what happens. And... um but I'd rather I'd rather speak truth to um, to more limited audiences than speak blather and 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 misconceptions and lies to larger audiences. Mm-hmm. And speaking of blather, misconceptions and lies, I mean, uh, I know we talked about uh, a little bit about what was going on in Libya back in July. So I was just wondering, kind of, what your take on things are now. Like, do you think a lot of the things we talked about back then, like say. Um, you know, the, uh, the oil companies kind of wanting in and like, you know, and uh, the kind of, you know, foreign imperialism, um, mm-hmm. you know, and, and its goals and that sort of thing. So it was really played out now. It, it was the message, it's yeah. the same message, whether they're invading Grenada or Panama or, or destroying Yugoslavia and such. They are sending the message that no political movement, no leader, no nation can take an alternative course. No nation can find self-defining, self-developing um, course to uh, 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 for its own destiny and for its own resources, that the labor, land, and resources, and markets, and capital of this country should be should belong to that global uh, corporate system that that takes over everything. And if you don't do it, we'll find ways to get get you. And that includes bombing your country and destroying and and murdering the leaders. You know, mm-hmm. well, I that's, mean, well, yeah. and, and accusing. What you do is, and again, I'll talk about that tonight. I mean, what, what you do is you demonize the leader, and once you demonize the leader, this gives you license to bomb his country. And the public thinks, oh, well, we're fighting a humanitarian war. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are people in the United States, even on the left, who supposedly, they literally believe that that the motive was that the, the NATO powers were so suddenly concerned that there had been um, a, 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 some hundred people killed, although they, they called it a thousand slaughtered, that we had to wage a humanitarian war. Well, but there was no it's evidence. Like Kosovo. There was no evidence. Yeah. It was same like Kosovo and Yugoslavia yeah. and Milosevic. He didn't kill anybody. I mean, where were the bodies after they took over Kosovo? They said hundred thousand. We, we, where it's were the bodies? <laughs> they couldn't find them. Don't you find know? it. Yeah. Yeah. The the the, the, the Tremka uh, mines. They said the shafts were filled with bodies. When they got there, there was nothing. Not a belt buckle or a shoe or a or a piece of uh, skele- human skeleton or anything. Uh, it was just pure lies, fabrications. And what what's very discouraging is how there are people on the left, the progressive 
uh, <clears throat> people who who uh, uh, believe these stories. Yeah. The same people who tell us don't believe the major media and what they say, they were believing the major media. And, and what they say. And, and, and what the White House puts out and don't believe what NATO and the CIA and the Pentagon puts out, but they were believing it. And so... <clears throat> This is this really gives imperialism a free hand to do what it is dedicated to doing, which is to keep make the world safe for the Fortune 500. Yeah. Well, you see, um, for yeah, that one exactly, percent. The one percent. It's yeah. really a, it's really a fraction. Yeah, a of fraction 1%. of one percent. Yeah. But I mean, these guys. I mean, it's just I, I know exactly what you mean with these uh, these you know progressives who uh, nonetheless end up supporting <coughs> the the war effort in some way. I mean, it's just I've. Um, uh, it was a, it was just a conversation like uh, back and forth in a Facebook group, uh, Facebook mm-hmm. page, and uh, but it comes comes through this person like is is talking, you know I must be like a bad bad man because like I'm I'm, I'm actually giving Gaddafi like some credit, mm-hmm. and, uh, and you know he's he's talking about like you know and and when, as soon as I brought up the whole idea like you know how would you like, you know if a NATO bomb fell in your house and killed like you know, say five five yeah. family members and stuff like that and he said like no in fact that'd be um, and be a lesser evil than living under a tyrant like Gaddafi. Oh God! You know, it's yeah. it's stuff like that, right? Well, the tyrant he did he did things tyrannical things like kick out the oil co- private British and American oil companies, sell the oil himself, and use that money to build houses for the Libyan people, mm-hmm. uh, where they lived for for a, a, a minimal rent, and in fact, no rent, I think. And uh, he built a health care system. He built educational system, all free and available for all the whole Libyan population. He built this wonderful aquifer system mm-hmm. where the aquifer of the su- southern Libya, all that precious, fresh, ancient water was brought up to uh, northern Libya f- f- to for use in the cities and and on the farms. And this is totally impoverished country, like uh, yeah, and before he, and he, he comes right. comes and to he, power in sixty nine. That's right, yeah. and he did it. And, and it became it became the most prosperous country in Africa and uh, even in the Middle East, uh, even more prosperous than Iraq had been. Yeah. A- and um, and and he did it all without the IMF. He refused to have the IMF come in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 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 that's and these are unforgivable sins. When when a leader starts using all these resources and such and labor, and using it in a non-profit way, and and for his own common people. That's not the kind of world these plutocracy, the plutocracy wants to live in, and that's not the kind of world that they. Um, um, that's not the kind of world that they they're going to be building or dedicating themselves yeah, to. Yeah, tell us too, because I mean, I certainly the demonization went very, very far here. I mean, we get like, you know, say like images of you know, of his bloodied body getting dragged through the streets and stuff, Gaddafi's body getting dragged through the streets. Right. And we're supposed and to all feel happy all right. about it, right? And that was sort of yeah. all right. And so yeah. it was gruesome Even images, like way yeah. further than anything like with Saddam Hussein, you know. Right, and, right. Uh, Worse. yeah. And it's like, and this is like supposed with, to be like a laudable. With a bullet hole thing. right over his left eyebrow and another bu- bullet hole in his left temple. Yeah. He was uh, executed, right? Point blankly, yeah. Point blank, and then of course the uh, yeah. now videos are surfacing showing like uh, the and one of his sons, another, them, right? another one of his sons was murdered also. Yeah, yeah. And apparently one of them is still out there and, and the third one, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are two two of them have been killed now, and the third one is trying to get himself handed over to the court so he won't be summarily executed. Mm. By, by one of these vigilante mercenary groups. It's very interesting, this so-called rebel group in Libya who suddenly showed up with new weapons, new camouflage uniforms, organization, pay, money, and they... Uh, flags. Execu- you know, executing... Pre-Gaddafi flags, of course, would show up out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That too. That's right. Yeah. Uh, the ancien monarchy, the monarchy flags, yeah. Yeah. Well... Well, um, this is the kind of world that, they, and that doesn't mean the policy is a failure and it was confused and all mixed mm-hmm. up. And now, uh, that's this is exactly what they want, and that's what's happening. So, uh, so beyond that, of course, that's a manifestation in in Libya, of course, of of uh, very violent ex- uh, imperialism opposed from the outside. But certainly, if you get um, uh, I know I've made this point on my radio show a number of times, like just imperialism also like affects the people who are inside, you say, the empire. And uh, certainly one of the manifestations of that, not just in the United States, but if we're talking like in Europe with Greece and uh, Italy and uh, Spain and, well, Ireland is too, mm-hmm. like, you know, is now facing like, um, you know, bailouts and, uh, you know, the whole country is, like, seems to be like, you know, drowning in debt and uh, and that sort of thing. So like what, uh, so, you know, that's that's a form of imperialism as well. I believe I talked to you about back in in uh, in July. 
So if you want to speak to that a little bit. Yes. Um, well, debt becomes a weapon, a class weapon of the money class. The, the deeper in debt I can get you, the more impoverished you are, the more you have to uh, pay this debt, the more pressure there is on mm -hmm. you to pay it. And the way you pay it is by cutting back on, on the social wage and, and the benefits that would normally be won. Uh, so they've, they've discovered a way to destroy uh, social democracy in Western Europe. And Canada has had much of the same rollback, too, hasn't it? I mean, um, in many ways, it has. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, <clears throat> Especially the so, conservatives in power here now. Yeah, I know. Um, and, um, and I guess in Greece and Italy, uh, people are fighting now to maintain their... Uh, their pensions or the value of the land. Well, what a country usually does when it can't can't pay its bill or can't pay its debt is it devalues its currency and that immediately lightens the debt. You're paying it with less. Uh, uh, yeah. A, like a creditor never really wants a deflate uh, an inflated currency to get paid off with, and that's what you, in effect you're doing. Um, when you devalue the currency, you inflate it. You know and. Uh, mm. Uh, but they can't do it because they're all using euros. So, so then the question comes up: Is how do we deal with this? And and some of the other more prosperous countries are apparently are supposed to pick up some of the tab. Um, I don't know. I think the banks should l let them go under. There's a in Italy. There's a finance minister. He's really not too bad considering the fact that he works for a slime bag right wing <laughs> like uh, Berlusconi. Berlusconi. He's a, he's a member yeah. of the Berlusconi government, uh, uh, Tremonte, uh, I think is uh, uh, Giulio, Giulio Tremonte. He's the Minister of Finance. He said, Salvate il popolo non le banche. Save the people, not the banks. Save the I mean, people, not the banks. That's kind of amazing to that's, hear that from Wow, him. yeah. I, I sure wish somebody in the Obama or, <laughs> ha or Harper administration. Administrations, yeah. Yeah, would Saying anything wait, like that. In ca Canada, do you call it the Harper government? Or yeah, Harper it's Harper government, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. The Harper, it would be nice if Harper or one of his harpies would come <laughs> out and say something <laughs> for the people, you know? That would be nice. Oh, yeah. I'm not holding my breath on that, though. Yeah, you won't <laughs> hold your breath. You know, it's like, yeah. Uh, but it, it's sort of like you, like even in uh, back, you, you write the book, The Assassination of Julius Caesar, right? And you're talking about like how people were practically enslaved over debt, right? And like how right. ancient this uh, this whole process is. Right, Right, yes. like in about like, you know, citizens uh, would, of course, be, be in debt, of course, to the... Uh, you know, like your average people, you know, in debt to the landlords or the slumlords or, you know, to the rich, and rich all senators. Yeah. yeah. And that was like how they yeah. exercise control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and Caesar, Caesar uh, canceled a lot of that debt. Caesar also cut rents in mm -hmm. half. They were exorbitant rents. And uh, he also put in, um, he put in um, edicts to, uh, require the landlords who had stolen most of the pop popular land um he, he got them to to they, they had to hire half half of their workforce had to be free labor because mm -hmm. they had all slaves you well, go yeah, out you go out in the roman countryside and it was empty there were no more farmers and no more villages it was just all great plantations with slaves working on them mm -hmm. and uh <clears throat> And they kill them for that. Yeah. yeah. So it's like he's ca taking out their method of control, like one of their prime methods of control. Right. He was you know, trying like to. Multiple methods of control. Right. Yeah. Right. So you'd say like that's almost like um, what to, like there's parallels, I guess, between him and Gaddafi in some senses. Well, there's parallels with 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 dozens and dozens of leaders who yeah. have been assassinated, who's still getting assassinated, you know, and killed. Mm. Um, Milosevic was on trial, uh, you know. Uh, and they say he's on trial in The Hague. He wasn't in the, the Hague court. He was in this special kangaroo court that was set up by the British and the Americans, um, the uh, International Tribunal for the Former Yugoslavia. Former Yugoslavia. That was the name of the court. Yeah. It was a special tribunal. It's still in, is, is in existence. So Milosevic was on trial, and the case against him went for... Two years, the prosecution kept making this case, kept desperately bringing up witnesses because the witnesses they had were fading away. Yeah. There was no evidence. At the end of two years, one of the jurists, uh, the, the the head jurist, uh, uh, Carlo Carla Del Ponte, okay, who was yeah, a Swiss, yeah. she was mm -hmm. an Italian Swiss, she said, um, 
we we don't have a case against this guy. We we really cannot <laughs> yeah. m- give him a serious penalty. Yeah. I mean, they might hold him for a year, two years, whatever. But they already had him in jail for two years while they were prosecuting him, and it was his then. It was his turn to excuse me to open up his defense. I yeah. know I was one of his witnesses that was supposed to come. I was one of the expert witnesses that was on the list of people he was going to call. He had read my book and loved like it the, and all um, that. Yeah. The, uh, to kill, kill a nation, nation right, right? Yeah. To kill a nation. Mm-hmm. And then he, he also said two weeks before he died, he said several times, they're trying to poison me. And then when he died, an autopsy reported in the press here, uh, the autopsy, the coroner said... Um, he had some kind of substance in his body which was designed to mimic a heart attack. He died of a heart attack. Wow, yeah. Um, I didn't and know this. this. W- and this was his ploy to simulate a heart attack. He would be released and sent to Moscow to be treated by doctors there because there are no doctors in the Netherlands or in all of Western <laughs> Europe. Uh, and this was uh, this was crazy. And he would wow. once once he was in Moscow, he would refuse to come back. They were saying this was his whole plan. So he had taken this substance to simulate a heart attack, and it backfired, and that's how he died. It wasn't a natural heart attack. Now this is very strange because Milosevic knew that if he had a heart attack, they wouldn't ship, they wouldn't send him off to Moscow, where he would then he could live with his wife and be free from any further mm. prosecution. That you know that he was cleverly plotting this kind of. Thing. And it was so totally, but but it raises the question: Well, where did this substance come from? And he said he was being poisoned, and they and they admit they did not have a case against him. And the new head jurist who came in, a man by the name of Patrick Robinson, announced that we're going to have to make a real radical reading of this case. It does not seem to hold together much. Yeah. So all these charges against Milosevic as being a, a you know the last Stalin or whatever the <laughs> nutty trots were calling him. Oh, yeah. And, and, and anarchists and code pink yeah, people. Yeah, whoever else, and, right, yeah. And all the others. Um, and, and the feminists who said he was, he, he had a general who said, go forth and rape, a general who's, whose name... Yeah, they uh, don't never, report anything, any we, details. We never, we never yeah. found that general. We never found the location. We never found the unit to whom he said it. That kind of story came up in Libya, too, that Gaddafi oh, yeah, was the, handing out Viagra, Viagra yeah. to the Libyan troops so that they could go forth and rape. What are, What are you talking about? Yeah. What a what a. And that's, that's story. another thing, one of the things that that guy, uh, or yeah. several people I, I encountered on the Internet, they brought that up. And, and they just, believed it. And they believe it. They be- yeah. they actually believed that story. That, and it's progressive people believing yeah. that kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, you, you're going you're to go, go fight. You're going to go fight. Uh, you're going to go fight a war on Viagra? I don't yeah, think like, so. What's, yeah. What, what's the deal with that? Right. <laughs> you know, like. Um, yeah, uh, well, it's it's yeah. pathetic. It's really it, it really is. Yeah, yeah. Like it's it's absolutely pathetic. But it's like they yeah. they they sensationalize it, right? It's like we it's can we we'll believe da- it. Yeah, it's kind unfortunately dangerous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you don't if you don't abide by rule number one, which is always always show skepticism for anything that you hear on the media. And it's hard to keep your guard up all the time. Oh, it is. I mean, I wrote the book on this subject, a book <laughs> on this subject, and I myself find myself getting roped in and saying, what? Wow. Really? Ooh. Ooh. Then I'm saying, it takes me a while, and then well, I go, wait a minute, yeah. wait a minute. Is and this really true? Yeah. You know? And it's like everywhere, yeah. right? You, right? You hear this everywhere. You see this everywhere. Right. You know, it's like everybody's parroting this. So, you know, like what's... That, that why, makes it hard to be skeptical. That's why people who get this community, this campus radio station, should listen to Siegfried at every opportunity they can. <laughs> every they can. That's where they will get the <laughs> unadulterated truth. Yeah, that's right. That's uh, <coughs> that's back in the USSR, everybody, on uh, every every Saturday night starting at 10 p.m. And on so. that, and on that pat on the back, I think I'll sign I off. I think you'll sign off. Well, thank you very much, Michael. Right, thank, thank you. Thank you for coming here. Cheers. <laughs>